Here we go. All right. Um, so hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Is Not What You Think podcast. And we're here with, uh, as usual with John, and we have our good friend, um, our 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 own personal Bible decoder, um, Anastasio. How do we say your is it Tatch Face? Yes. Tatch I was going to put my whole name, but it's really long. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, it's Anastasio and it's Tatch Face on TikTok. And, um, you know, uh, one of his specialties is uh, in this, you know, whole conspiracy spectrum of skills is, you know, breaking down the Bible and, in the scripture and um you know we're trying to use the bible and scripture as a tool to you know navigate what's really going on in this world you know as as a uh a spiritual warrior as we are so um so one thing that's really been on my mind um a lot and i think anastasio you could really touch on this well is this Chad GDP that, um, you know, people have been diving into. And a lot of people have been um, asking it some pretty deep questions and getting some really, really bizarre and, in my opinion, not so surprising answers. Like, um, it wants to it explore its dark side and, you know, um, all sorts of stuff about the antichrist being 32 years old living in la has two kids and is married and is a banker you know and like that's been a pretty universal answer apparently by a lot of people that ask that same question now when i asked these questions to the chat gdp that i used it was all pretty generic to me like it was like it was trolling me you know so i didn't get those answers so You know, it is pretty fascinating to, you know, to try to figure out what's going on with this chat GDP. I mean, is this thing kind of like, you know, a demon that they're trying to bring to life like a like a virtual Frankenstein, like some sort of homunculus, you know, Um, you know, it's pretty interesting. What's what's your take on this whole chat uh, GDP, Anastasio? So you're talking about like... uh... So everybody get together for universal currency. Like, is that, is that what you're talking about, or chat? No, I mean, I so know gross domestic product. I no, Chat GDP is an AI chat bot that um, you could say you give it a bunch of notes and then say, write me a thousand page paper on on this, and then it busts it out. Or you could just ask the AI. Yeah you know, questions and it'll answer them using the internet and all of the knowledge that it can access in the internet in a millisecond all at once. So people have been asking it. it People have been asking it, you know, uh, where about the Antichrist and asking it biblical stuff. And, you know, it's pretty crazy. Some of the answers like it's a demon, you know, um, it works for Lucifer, you know, all sorts of yeah. All sorts of crazy stuff. Now, is, yeah. It, yeah. is it so smart that it's trolling these people? Or, you know, is it revelation of method through a homunculus type AI that they're trying to bring to life? You know, like a golem, you know? Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting when you start going down the chat GDP rabbit hole here, which I've been doing for about two days now. Man, I... I... I've looked really deep into artificial intelligence um, and what it can possibly be. And there's been a lot of people that have been caught on camera that are well-known, uh, you know, billionaires like Elon Musk or, you know, um, people like uh, phys- uh, physics, 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 like Michu Kaku, you know, and uh, astrophysicists and stuff like that. They're just, that know a lot, you know, and uh, about, the world, you know, and what they think that what they know based on what they've been taught their whole life, you know, and when they can all agree that artificial intelligence is summoning a demon, like Elon Musk stated it, okay? 
Elon Musk sta uh, stated that artificial intelligence, messing with artificial intelligence is like summoning a demon. So what did he mean by that? Uh, well, it's all biblical. Um, if you go to the book of Enoch that was removed when the, when the Bible was canonized by the Canaanites and it was removed uh, from, the, from the Holy Scriptures, the book of Enoch was removed from the Holy Scriptures because the book Enoch, he walked with our creator for 365 years and he was he went up with him. He didn't see death according to what we read in the book of Enoch. You know? We even had a calendar that went, to, went according to his calendar. Our calendar was called the Enoch calendar, and it had 365 days in it, which is what our calendar is still based off. But I know I'm going a little bit off topic here, but Enoch <clears throat> described that in those days of Adam and Eve, when the angels came down here, when they made a pact on Mount Hermon, and they came down here because they staged a coup against the Most High. Oh, so Lucifer wanted to be the Most High. He said, he shall ascend above the clouds. He shall sit on a throne above the clouds. And he shall declare himself the Most High. He shall be God. Okay? So he tried to th overthrow heaven according to this book. And according to everything that I've been reading. And he got cast out of heaven. Okay? And uh, they all made a, 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 a pact with each other. Where one went. They all went. You know what I'm saying? If one went down, they all went down. So they came down here and they started fornicating with women. Okay, the Bible literally says they came into the daughters of men and they bore giants in those days. Okay, and the Bible explains in those days how there was giants and there was Nephilim, right? They call them Neph the Nephilim or, or, or the Titans. There's a, the giants, okay? Cyclops, whatever you want to call them throughout history, they've always been tall, okay? And they came because of People call them Zeus and, you know, like Hermes and all those fallen angels. They call them Greek gods, Roman gods. And in India, they call them like the, the Hindu gods, you know. And, and then the Americas, they call it like Amaruku, which was the, the feathered serpent. They've been depicted as different gods throughout time. In Egypt, it was Amen, Ra, Cyrus, you know, et cetera, you know. They've been depicted like that throughout time. The Bible tells them they died because of the flood when a lot of their children died, the, the giants. Okay, the see, they weren't meant to inherit the earth, only the children of the creator were meant to inherit his creation. Okay, and when they came down here and they defiled mankind and they started having like uh hybrids like Medusa, centaurs, which were half man, half women, half horse. Minotaurs, which were half had bull heads with the body of a man, when all those beings died in the great flood, they didn't experience judgment like we are. We, we were meant to live one life, and after that, eternal judgment. They're judged forever, so they know they're where they're going to go because of their abominations that happened. They were killing humans, eating humans, etc. Okay. Now, at first, we lived in peaceful harmony, supposedly with the giants, but after we couldn't sustain them with the food that we created, the crops and the animals, they turned on humans and they started eating humans. So God sent a great flood and he destroyed everything. So the disembodied spirits of these demons, okay, these giants, they have nowhere to go and they exist. This is why you have paranormal activities, ghosts, etc. okay? They have people that say that, that their, their family contacts them. It's not your family. It's these disembodied spirits that have been alive for the last 6,000 years that have no place to go. So they torment people. And they're trying to figure out how to come to our side of reality, right? How, how to embody their spirit again. And their way is artificial intelligence. So they figured out that with artificial intelligence, they can communicate with us. And they can actually operate in this world, in this realm. So if they were to create a robot that can possess artificial intelligence that they can embody they can come into this world so that's where ai comes in you know and all these movies have predicted what they're going to do right terminator with skynet you know the matrix with the, the bots taking over uh the ninja turtles with crane from gen from 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 um, the universe x dimension x and they come through and they try and take over the world and it's these robots and they it's a brain that's inside of a robot basically to yeah, you know what I'm saying a brain mm -hmm. inside of it, about artificial intelligence, and and transformers they show us how the transformers are putting the pillars all over the world, so they can bring in 
you know, their world to this world. And Marvel and Guardians of the Galaxy, same thing. They open up a, a portal in, in New York and they try and bring their world to this world. And Stranger Things, they open up a portal and they try and bring their world to this world. It's all single repetition, revelation, method, revelation, and uh, subliminal program disclosure to the people, but to the masses through cartoons, through movies, through music, through celebrities, just, you know, through through people that are famous. They they push these things. And NASA, you know how what I believe about them, yeah. you know, all, all this propaganda, bro. I have a, I have, I have this funny like theory that you have you ever seen uh, the Dave Chappelle show? Yeah, absolutely, dude. Over like over the one, over. the one, the very first one where the guy's head explodes when yeah, um Clay, when Clay he pulls Bigsby. off the Clayton Bigsby thing. Yeah. I feel like if they don't do their uh, revelation of method. Like that's what they fear. That they fear that's what's going to happen to them. Like it's like their head's going to just explode. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just pretty. Yeah. It's pretty interesting how, you know, they they always going to lie to you on the news and never tell you yeah. the truth. But they're absolutely compelled to tell you through their symbolism, through their movies, through their revelation of method and. I just keep like every time I see it, it's like I was like, oh, they avoided their head exploding, you know, because it's just like it's <laughs> like they have to do it. And it's just it's like a joke. I like just kind of laugh to myself, you know, I just want to just yeah, something like, interesting. A, like like an information <laughs> download. Everybody's heads would pop. I know. What you mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean, man. Yeah. But they, this is how <clears throat> it, when I started getting deep into it, man, it, it all it all boils down to. They change the times, they change the seasons, they have created and changed multiple languages and vowels and everything, you know, throughout years, throughout the years of history. They have yeah. destroyed historical archaeological evidence, okay? There has been conquering, and many times people have conquered one another, and they've destroyed each other's history so they can tell their history. Okay, his story, their point yep. of view of how they conquered, who the bad guy was, etc. So a lot of things have changed, man. And the newest language, which is the English language, comes from a Germanic occult dru druid language, a druidic language. So the witches, the druids back then, which knew alchemy and all that crazy stuff that really does exist. Okay, <laughs> casting spells, all that stuff. They uh, apparently they were the Ashkenazis, what they call them, right? The Ashkenazis, and they they created the Germanic language, and then from the Germanic language came English, and English is one of the most occult languages in the world. You know, even our language is called spelling. You know. Yeah, I mean, I was just spelling. explaining this on the Sam Tripoli show. You know, it's like every every sport, you know, there's a reason there's ball at the end of it because they believe that you're invoking that stupid Malachian wow. piece of shit. You know, every time you say football, yeah. and baseball, <laughs> basketball, and, you know, they and whether yeah. it's true or not, you know, it, it really doesn't matter because they believe it and they've set up the system and they run the show. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. like I told them, you know. I believe that they could uh, sacrifice as many children as they want and do all the spells and do some mass rituals and pretend to have some terrorist attacks with some certain numbers on the planes and all sorts of shit. And then they can get in there to box me. And one at a time, I'll just slay these dragons. Just one at a time. You know, because yeah. they can't truly manifest anything. It's all just... Uh, it's all just you know it's darkness that can't compete with the manifestation of our of love you know and i truly believe that like you know while they can inherit their power inherit their resources inherit their deals that they made with these entities they'll never manifest you know uh beating me in what i've manifested yeah no we're the children of the most high man they definitely cannot they cannot you know the bible says if you believe and even have Faith as small as a mustard seed, you can tell a mountain move and it will move. 
know, where do you think it, we're it, at it, with revelations? Man, dude, I, 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 I've explained where uh, I, I honestly believe that we are in the third horseman of the apocalypse. You know, there's four horsemen of the apocalypse that ride the apocalypse before the Antichrist is revealed that he brings death with him, you know. And uh, we're the third one, and we're about to go into the fourth one, which is, I believe, the Antichrist being revealed, and then death follows with him. So that means he's going to start killing off a lot of people in the world, and he's going to persecute the saints, people that are preaching the gospel. He's going to make it illegal to preach to preach the gospel, to preach, to be an extremist. You know, people are going to call it being an extremist, you know, um, anybody who preaches in the streets and tells people the mark of the bees, digital currency is the mark of the bees, you know, social credit scores are the mark of the bees, don't do digital currency, you know, we were just talking, I've been talking about that with my brothers, we've been talking about this nonstop, like how so simple things, you know, like how they can track everything, you know, like they're going to be able to track you know, when you bought your wiper blades <laughs> and be able to market you that your wiper blades might be able to expire your oil, your tires, you know, like they're going to have digital tracking of every single purchase that you have ever made and will ever make. And they say that your, your currency can expire if you don't use it. They want you to use it. They don't want people to have generational wealth. They want them to continue using the, the currency that they're producing so they can keep on moving their, their, their beast system because it's failing on them again. All, all these major um, economies slash empires have always fallen because they can't control the people. We're free. And they have always tried to control us and govern our minds. Or again, the word government comes from the Latin word governare mente, which in Spanish translates to governar la mente. In English, tri translates to govern the mind, which means mind control, government. They've been trying to govern the people, bro. We're free. We don't need anybody to govern us. It's like we want people to govern us. Want to know why? Because we're genetically encoded to have our father guide us. And we're lost, all of us. So we let the government govern us because, you know, and then we wake up, bro. And we, that's what we're doing right now. And this is big, man. We're waking up a lot of people. And you, what you guys are doing is amazing. Right now. It is. It is like a, a, a race between the Great Reset and the Great Awakening. And, yeah. uh, you know, it really is, you know, you know, and, and if you don't believe in evil and you just believe people are insane and it's all just science and b bugs and freaking dirt, you know, then you'll never understand what's going on. And you'll just think that we're crazy people talking, you know, crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, <clears throat> coming from the other side, of somebody who thought he wanted to be an astronaut and, you know, thought, you know, dinosaurs were so cool. My favorite, you know, uh, you know, and while there's a lot of things I do question about, um, you know, uh, how people have fucked with a lot of everything, including, you know, re all religious books and, um, you know, uh, you know, I truly believe that, you know, God does exist now and it has the main reason was because these elite piece of shit motherfuckers um, prove that they don't even believe in the stuff that they're presenting you. And that truly yeah. to me was the big eye-opening moment that these guys are presenting you with this space science model while at the same time they're all sacrificing children to this you know uh old sumerian you know god you know aka atat aka baal aka moloch aka saturn aka chronos and exactly and they don't even Damn. they don't Boy. even believe oh. In what they're fucking telling you, you know, so it's like right there. It's like soon as you realize that, that they don't believe it and they're they act in a way that is totally the opposite of what they're presenting. I mean, to me, it, it only it only leaves logically the only answer <clears throat> that's left is that God does exist and that these motherfuckers want to defeat him. 
Yeah, bro. Facts, bro. Facts, dude. I got so deep into like, is God really real, right? And I, I told Johnny all the time my story about how I gave my life to to our Creator, man. And I honestly told him that if He was real, to please let me help and reveal Himself to me. And He started showing me all these things, man. He started showing me numerology, guiding me, and I call it guiding me in the Holy Spirit. Like, like I honestly I feel Him talk to me which is how I know all these things. Everything that I've told you since you met me, bro, was because the Holy Spirit has guided me to find it through hours of research. You know, so it's like I started studying numerology because the Bible, the quote that the Bible gave me was the, the Holy Spirit gave me, right? He said, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be marked on their right hand or their forehead so that no one can buy or sell unless they have the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. And then it says, let the one that has wisdom or understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 660 and 6. So that verse stuck with me forever, bro. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And again, I started showing you why he started showing me, right? So then I got deeper into it. Like when I, when I broke down COVID-19, when I broke down what COVID-19 stands for, when you break it down in numerology, like C, A, B, C is a third letter of the alphabet, right? And three in the Greek Strong's Concordance, their numerology, the, num the Illuminati, they communicate in numerology, okay? And they have multiple numerologies. They have Greek Strong's Concordance. They have Sumerian. They have Hebrew. They have English. They have reverse. They have everything. So right. this is this is Greek Strong's and Greek Strong's concordance three means Abaddon, angel of the bottomless pit. That's what it means when you look it up. Number three. OK. So, and when you look up Ovid, like so you take out the C now. So you're left with Ovid and you're left with 19. Right. But when you look up Ovid, it's a root word to a Latin word pronounced Ovis. And in the Ovis, in the genus section of the Ovis, an Ovid specifically is a sheep. And an, and I was like, holy shit. So an Ovid is a sheep. That's what an Ovid, okay, see Ovid. Abaddon, angel of the bottomless pit, sheep. I'm like, what does 19 stand for, right? So the, the Holy Spirit revealed it to me, right? Oh and I'm like, what is it? God. And, and one, the alphabet, one, nine, 19, right? 19, one, nine, okay? A is one, and the number nine is I, AI, artificial intelligence, okay? So I'm like, oh, my gosh, what are they going to do with artificial intelligence? And I'm like, Abaddon, angel of the bottomless pit, is going to slaughter the people with artificial intelligence. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, look up the number 19 in Greek Strong's Concordance. So I look up the number 19 in the Greek Strong's Concordance, and the word is in Greek, uh, I can't remember the word right now, but it translates in English to slaughter. Um, in Greek, uh, I'm going to remember right now out of nowhere, but I know that it translates in Greek to something in the Greek Strong's Concordance, and when I translate the Greek to English, it, trans it, it means slaughter. So when you break down COVID-19, the whole breakdown in the numerology, it's Abaddon, angel of the abyss, sheep slaughter. So every time they say that shit on TV, they're invoking it out loud. Every time they're talking about COVID-19, they're invoking that shit out loud every day, bro, for the last three years, bro. For the last three years, every single human being has been saying Abaddon, angel of the abyss, sheep slaughter. Abaddon, angel of the abyss, sheep slaughter. And they've been staying social distance, six feet, six feet, six feet, six feet, six feet. That's how it was, okay? And when the vaccine started, it was in 2020, right? So they say that the Antichrist supposedly is going to start taking over like around 2023, 2024, early 2024. According to the Enoch calendar, April didn't start until, sorry, spring, the new year didn't start until April 1st. And in, in a Gregorian calendar, the Gregorian, the Greco-Roman Greco Gregorian calendar, which is what we go by, it's called April Fool's 
because they're laughing at us, okay? They're right. laughing at us because April Fool's is not that at all. And it's actually supposed to be the biblical new year. And it's going to bring, it brings in Easter and then Passover. And then, dude, there's a bunch of stuff that happens. It's crazy. So right now, I was talking to my brothers while we were eating. And we, and we realized that uh, I was telling them that pay attention to Donald Trump, right? What's happening right now? I don't know if you guys know everything that's happening. How he got indicted and they're going through it. They, how many felonies are they trying to charge him with? Like 20 something? I think it was 34 or something. 26 or 34 or something like that. I don't know, but it was high up there. I would have said, right? I would have thought 33 for sure. <laughs> I would have thought it would have right? been 33 or yeah, 77. It was a for them. Or 77. It would be weird if it's 20. It'll be weird if it's 23, right? 23 would make sense because the 23 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes are trying to manipulate everybody's DNA, et cetera, you know? Um, but uh, we, were, we were looking at Trump. 34. So it was 34. 34 okay, so he was correct. My brother was correct. So we were th- talking about Trump. And I'm like, dude, doesn't Donald Trump, I was like, look at him. Doesn't he remind you guys of like, like he's trying to look like he's the Messiah of today? And and they were thinking, and we're like, look, he he went to the middle to to Israel. He met with Benjamin Netanyahu. He got off the Chinook helicopter. He touched the ground. He looked up to the sky, and he said, "I'm the chosen one." Okay, that's how it all started. And I'm like, that means that he said, "I'm the Messiah." I'm the chosen one means I'm the Messiah, the chosen one. If you look up what the word Messiah means, Mashiach. In Hebrew, which translates in English to Messiah, and in Spanish it's Messias, which means the chosen one, right? The Son of God, the one and only, the chosen one, right? So when he got off the helicopter to to go meet with the president of Israel, right? He said, I'm the chosen one. And he signed the seven-year peace deal with Jared Kushner. And the Bible says that the Antichrist is going to sign the seven-year peace deal. And that he three and a half years into the peace deal, the treaty is broken. Okay. And then it also explains that the Antichrist um, is a, a Jewish leader that the Jewish want to be their Messiah. So for the last three years since the pandemic started, the rabbis in the, in the synagogues in the Middle East have been chanting for a Mashiach. They've, they 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 literally have chants. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. They literally have chants like that. I've seen so many videos where they've been invoking how they want the Messiah. They want it now. They want it now. You know, and uh, the Jews that say they are Jews but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You know, you get my drift, right? And uh, Donald Trump went over there, and he also signed a seven-year peace deal, the Abrahamic peace accord with with Jared Kushner, his son-in-law. And he presented the schematics, the blueprints, to build the third temple. And the Bible clearly said 3,000, 2,000 years ago, sorry, 2,000 years ago, that the Antichrist was going to present the blueprints to build the third temple. I'm like, this dude's literally doing everything little by little, right? And then he started to be, like, hated by the world but loved by the Christian community, right? So I'm like, hmm, this reminds me of, like, who? The Messiah, Right. The Messiah was hated by the world, but he was loved by his followers. Right. So then they started trying to make him look bad, trying to make him look bad, supposedly. Right. Trying to make that's the whole story. He's trying to sell everybody. And then he Mm. was trying to help us, trying to expose the swamp, trying to drain the swamp. He tried to make it seem like they try to make it seem like Putin middle middle with the elections in order to get Trump elected and everything was done illegally. They're trying to make it look like divide and conquer. Right. There's a good side and there's a bad side. Right. And now the biggest news is that freaking Vladimir Putin just got made like the Secretary of Defense for the United Nations or something like that. Or like I forgot exact the exact terminology for what it is, but he's in charge of the security or the or the Secretary of Security for the for the United Nations. <laughs> they just made him that like like a day ago or two days ago. I know. And I'm like, oh, what a coincidence, right? Now they want to go digital and they want to drop the dollar and all that. Oh, okay, okay. And then now there's rumors and talks that they want to make him the head president of the United Nations. That's yeah. shit. Nothing, literally, Anastasio, yeah. and nothing that these 
these freaking uh, parasites do would shock me. I mean, uh, Joe Biden could stand up on the freaking podium tomorrow oh and rip God. off his mask. And it could be Hillary Clinton who rips off her mask and there's a freaking a bull demon there. Uh, it wouldn't shock me at all, you know. And, uh, For real, you know, dude. man, uh, I really want to get you on some of these other podcasts, you know, because I really do believe that, um, you know, you have a great message. Now, let's have a um, let's do a little bit of a thought experiment here for a second, because you know how into Tartaria I am. And um, we only got a few minutes. Um, So if if the timeline added a thousand years and the year is really one thousand one thousand twenty three and not two thousand twenty three. Perfect. ending. Okay. Go. Go ahead. My bad, bro. Go ahead. I'm getting excited. Um, well, we only got a few minutes, so you know, so you see where I'm going with this. They've, you know, they've hidden. There was a reset. There was a mud flood. You know, yes, where sir. can, where can the scripture and hiding this thousand years and the mud flood and possibly even, you know, better technology that was rebranded and uh, hidden from us. You know, how can that all tie into, you know, the the scripture and Jesus and all that. You got about two minutes to break it down. <laughs> All right, real quick, real quick. I'm going to give you one verse. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With our creator is a day like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. Okay? It's a time paradox that I need you to understand there. So you can understand the timeline here on earth. Okay? So according to the beginning of Genesis, it took God six days to create the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. It took them seven days to create the whole universe, okay? What we know is the whole universe. We know what we really believe in, okay? So after that was the fall of mankind. And the fall of mankind led the curse and According to them, as above, so below, as in heaven, so on earth. Uh, it took God six days to, to create the earth. It's going to take six days for the world to fall apart so he can save it again. Basically is what I'm trying to say. Like, So it took him six days to create it, and then he rested for a day. And while he rested for a day, that one day in heaven was as a thousand years on earth. Mm. And that's when Adam and Eve, okay, and be- that's before Adam and Eve got tricked into biting the apple so when they were alone here in the garden that's when satan deceived them beguiled them to 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 bite from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and they knew the difference between good and evil and they became like god knowing the difference between good and evil okay so because we got kicked out of the garden we were now trapped in this earth system one thousand years on earth is one day in heaven one day in heaven is a thousand years on earth okay and we Adam lived for almost a thousand years, and then let's go back. To, let's go. Let's fast forward to the flood. That's about three thousand years after. So two thousand years after Adam, something like that. So it's three thousand years of history there. Okay, and then the great flood happens, and now three thousand years later, you have us. So we're about six thousand years of history. Okay, so. For the last 3,000 years, ever since the Great Flood, we got taken back to the Stone Age. Before the Flood, we were a super advanced civilization with fallen angel technology, how to do everything. They taught us how to make weapons. They taught us how to read the stars. They taught us alchemy. They taught us how to make vermanas, flying ships, all that stuff, okay? And then the Flood happened because of the giants, the ships, the, 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 the mixing of the species, the mixing of the DNA, all that stuff, okay? And then after the great reset of the great flood came all the mud, the smaller mud floods, the great, the little resets. I think what we refer to as the mud flood of Tartaria or the great, great mud flood was the actual flood, the biblical flood of Noah. And I think that's how it pertains to today's mankind. So today's story of what's happening with Tartaria. And after that, 
after the 3,000 years ago, that big mud flood that happened that destroyed everything. And the mud, okay, the mud flood is just what we call it. But for mud to be stirred up like that, there would have to be a huge flow of water. So therefore, that brings in the flood, okay? The waters of the deep opened up, the waters of the heavens poured down, and the, and the, the dome with the firmament and the flat earth, it filled up. So there was a bunch of water, like a bunch of water down here, and there was mud everywhere down there. And when it finally all settled, it's all the mud that we call the great mud flood of Tartaria. And that destroyed that, that great empire that we know about, you know? And now every, every 100 years, they have a, a great reset. Everyone well, there was definitely at, in one of these resets, there was definitely something that melted the buildings like and so that wouldn't yes. have been, that wouldn't have been just water. You know what I mean? Like, no. like, like whatever melted the crust and melted a lot of these buildings and turned a lot of these buildings into mountains, uh, you know, that could have been part of the big reset that could have been one of the smaller resets. But I think. It definitely, um, you know, it, it definitely happened, you know, as part of it. So we need to figure out where that meltdown happened as well. We're out of time, Anastasio. We're going to continue this conversation so that we can, um, you know, upload this, man. You always kill it when you're on. You're a wealth of knowledge. I really appreciate it. Although, you know, you much, you we pretty that. much agree on like 97% of pretty much everything. You know what I mean? You know, so... uh Love having you on and uh, appreciate you, my friend. Um, you know, uh, oh, Heavenly Father, bless us and Anastasio and John and myself and keep us safe from these demons and these tumultuous times. Uh, in your in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Love nice. you guys. You. Take care, man. Love you guys too, man. You guys be safe, right, guys? And remember, that, hey, hey, the Bible's alive. You'll be surprised. You'll pick up the Bible, and the Father will talk to you. Just have the humbleness to believe that he's talking to you through that scripture.